capacity capacity. What do you do that for? Because it's like anything else, we need to continually boost. And that's why we read the word. That's why we pray for one another. And this building is used for more than just church. It's used for things that come in that, that maybe we don't want here as far as spirit-wise. And so we pray for it. And we pray for the great things that are going to happen in this building. I believe that. I've said it for 10 years. And I can see it happening now. The flames are starting to grow. And so we need to continue to pray. What's the value of the, of the church? Well, the value is about, and I'm not talking money here. Because I cannot put the value on the church. Because guess what? You are the church. Not the building. And I can't put any value on you. Matthew is expensive. Good to you. <laughs> In more ways than we know, huh? We're all, I, I can't put a value on you. But you're the church. And I value you. But what does the what does the denomination think about the church? We 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 looked at uh, all, all these things and and they kind of have a, a hierarchy. We talk about you know we talk about the Father. At first we talk about the Trinity, then we talk about the Father, and then we talk about the Son, and we talk about the Holy Spirit. We talked about sanctification. We talked about uh, last week the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So this week, Article 15 of the of the 20, 21 Articles is this the church? What's the church? How, what does that have to do with our denomination? Let's, let's see. Let's just read art, the article. I think it's 16. I think it's 15. I think it's 16. But let's, let's read what the article says. It says, We believe that the Christian church is the entire body of believers in Jesus Christ, who is the founder and only head of the church. Yeah. I'm not the head of the church. Ben is not the head of the church. He's the vice chair. Yeah, Ben is right. <laughs> that, that'd be scary, wouldn't it? He might be the vice chair. He might have a big say. We ignore him, but he has a big say. Jesus is the only head of the church. Amen. And he should always should be the head of the church. And we should never forget that. The church includes both those believers who have gone to be with the Lord and those who remain on the earth, having renounced the world, the flesh, and the devil. Let's continue and having dedicated themselves to the work which Christ committed unto his church until he comes. Wow. So, what's the church? The church is everybody, Christian, past, present, and future. Believers that have renounced the world, renounced the devil, and, and, and accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So you say, well, that's everybody in the church. No, it's not. Because there's people that go to church that have never renounced evil. There are people in the church that have never renounced sin. But I go to the church every week. I've never killed anybody. The Bible says, until you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you are a sinner. That's what it says. Ben has not done it, and I'm glad he hasn't. But a challenge was made to all the lay people at that conference last week to, to, to start bugging your pastor about when the next baptism is. It's a good question. We didn't have any last year. None. Zero. Zip. I mean, we can't start grabbing people and say, okay, today's your day, you're going to get baptized. Hey, I realize you got baptized a long time ago, but you know, we just have to have them. We're not going to do that. The point is, we need to bring people in that need to know about Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church. And let them know that just because they're sitting in a pew or sitting in a chair, that doesn't make it good. Past, present. All those people that have gone on before are standing there waiting for us to get there. They're cheering us on, as it says in Hebrews. Wow. You have a cloud of witnesses cheering for you as you run the race. That's awesome. That is awesome. Have you ever had anybody cheer for you? It's cool. It is cool. Joni does it and it drives me nuts. You know, she, she's, still, she's still doing one of those uh, our, our, what was it, Arsenio Hall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So here we've got 30-year-old kids, kids, and they're doing something. We're in the stand. You know, you see their head go. <laughs> they know it's mom. <laughs> this 
no doubt in their mind. Thousands of people. Woo, woo, woo. They know a dog's not loose. They know it's mom cheering them on. But if they didn't hear that, it has the opposite effect. The saints that have gone on before us are cheering us on. You can do it. I remember when Tree of Life was such and such and such. You can blow that away. You can do three and four services. You need to get a bigger church. Say, well, there's only about 20 or 30 of us here now. So what? It's starting with 12. And look where it's gone. As long as Jesus Christ is the head of the church, it cannot be stopped. All the believers, all the, the body of Christ are all the believers, past, present, and future, that have called upon him for forgiveness of their sins. The church on earth, getting back to, to the, 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 uh, the article, the church on earth is to preach the pure word of God, properly administer the sacraments according to Christ's instructions, and live in obedience to all that Christ commands. If your church is a preaching the word of God, Go someplace else. That preacher's not doing what he's supposed to be doing. Coach me. It's not something to make the preacher feel good because he's got so many people there. It's a life and death situation each and every week. We don't know who's going to be here next week. Pure word of God, properly administered the stack sacraments according to Christ's instructions, and live obedience to all that Christ commands. It continues and says, A local church is a body of believers formally organized on gospel principles. Gospel principles. Well, what are those? Huh? We just did one of those gospel principles. Someone said, I need a touch from God. I need to be prayed for. And we did that. That's a gospel principle. It says that the elders of the church are to lay their hands on and, and pray for them. We did that. Gospel principles. Organizing gospel principles, meeting regularly for the purpose of evangelism, nurture, fellowship, and worship. Uh oh. Meeting regularly. I wonder what that means. It means Christmas and Easter? That's not regular. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's it. That's, not, that's what some people think. Hey, Christmas and Easter, and it's good to go. That's not it. Meeting regularly. Why do we meet regularly? For the purpose of evangelism. When you show up, other people get excited. When the crowds get bigger, and people say amen like we got going over here. Like I said before, that's like saying sick to a bulldog. That's exactly what it means. It means you're saying something I agree with, preacher. And I'm not just sitting here sleeping. I'm paying attention. I hear you. I agree with you. You're preaching to me. Purpose of evangelism. Because when somebody else comes in and they're sitting here and they don't know anything about Jesus Christ, they just know they're supposed to go to church, and they see people get excited, they don't think that becoming a Christian is something that's boring. That my life has ended. It'll never be the same. I'll never be happy again. Because they just sit here, victory in Jesus, my Savior. Oh. No, that's not it. Everything should be exciting because we have victory. Amen. This world is just a passing by. My treasures are laid up somewhere, somewhere beyond the blue. As the song says, the angels beckon me to heaven's open door, and I won't feel at home in this world anymore. I'm visiting Earth. That's right. I've got something better in store, and I want all y'all to be with me. For the purpose of evangelism, nurture, and we did that. Fellowship, we did that. And worship, we did that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Perfect. It continues. The Wesleyan Church is a denomination consisting of those members within district conferences and local churches who, as members of the body of Christ, hold the faith set forth in these articles of religion and acknowledge the ecclesiastical authority of its governing bodies. In other words, the people, the church people, are the governing bodies. That's why we have a board, a board of administration. Wow. Well, that's good, but you haven't said anything. There's no scripture there, there's no nothing. I'm good there. And we're going to run 
through because I knew we were going to run late. So we're just going to do a couple of them here. Look at this first one. Matthew 16, 18 through 19, uh, out of the NIV. And I tell you that you are, Peter, on this rock I will build my church. On you I will build the people. Not the building. I will build the people. You are the one who's going to get things started. You're the one that, 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 that I'm going to start building on. I've got to have some place to start with. So you're my preacher. You're the one who's going to start it. And it's going to catch on from there. And on this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We have the power to bind up evil right now. We never do it. We never call upon that. Why? Peter was given the authority, and that's been passed on from generation to generation to generation. We just talked about that. Laying hands on is calling down the power of Jesus Christ. Wow. We don't do it enough. And in small churches, it's really easy to do. Wow. We can wind it up. We have the keys to the kingdom. Next passage. Psalm 118.22. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. What were we just told? Peter was going to be the stone that they're going to build the church on, but there's a cornerstone that has to be laid first, as I understand it. Is that right, Bill? So it should be some kind of stone, stone to start with, right? I mean, one has got to be just, just so, so, or else the rest of them. See, that'd be, that's the way I do things. I'm just going to throw them in there haphazardly. That's why they don't stay up. I don't make it, I don't make it, Joni does that. Joni drives, she does it the way it's supposed to be done. I want it done now. Ooh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Joni says, no, let's take our time. And we're going to measure this. Oh, it's not level yet. I'd be done already. She does a great job. Peter is a stone, but Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. So right next to that cornerstone is people. Right next to Jesus Christ is us. Look at this next one. Ephesians 2, 19 and 22. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people, and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. We can't think about the church being the building. It's not the building. But we're building something here. Catching this? We've got, a, we've got a headstone. We've got a cornerstone. Now we've got a foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Wow. And we are citizens with God's people. It didn't say you're citizens with the people in buildings. It didn't say you're citizens with the people of Montana. It says you're citizens with God's people. We are all citizens of his kingdom. If you've acknowledged Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. Next verse. In him, Ephesians to continue on. In him, the whole building is joined together and raises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. We are the church. God lives in us if we've accepted him. We are a temple. We are his dwelling place. Not here. When we lock the door up and leave, he doesn't stay here. He should be with each and every one of us. We take him home. Because this is the temple of the Lord. And quickly, Acts 2, 41 and 47. Those who accepted his message were baptized. We talked about Peter. That's right after Pentecost. He's preaching, right? And he's, and he's speaking in tongues. We talked about that last week. That it's given for a specific purpose. And then he talked to all these people and they understood it. That's what... what that was for, is, is, is they didn't have to, to, to go down and try to find somebody to translate. That's, that's, that's hard. He spoke it, they understood it. And that day, look what it says. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to the number that day. Wow. That's a baptismal ceremony. Huh? Their arms were killing them afterwards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, exactly. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. We break bread monthly, a couple times a month. Huh? They used to do it every time they met. 
Boy, I like that. I really do. That's the church that Joni and I came from. Every time the doors were open, we had to But some people say, well, we have it too often, and it doesn't mean anything. No, that's a problem between you. Because when you take communion, you should always think about it. But that is the body and the blood of Jesus Christ and what it did for us. They devoted themselves to the apostle teaching and the fellowship, the breaking of bread and prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And I can tell you what, they were in awe at the signs and wonders performed by the rest of the body of Christ. Wow. Good to me. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Wow, it seems like whenever God's people get together, they always seem to be happy and they're always praising God. When did that leave? Boy, you get to God's house, you become solemn, you know? Why? It's an exciting time. They got together. And with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of other people. Continue. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is past the original 3,000. Out of that 3,000, more and more and more and more, and you and I became Christians. Acts 9, 31. Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened. Living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. Wow. When we accept Jesus Christ, we don't want anybody else to be left behind. That's right. So we're constantly inviting. I don't care if you invite 5,000 times, we constantly invite. There's too many stories of people that invited for 20 years and 30 years every single week and nothing ever happened. And then on the 31st year, they accepted. And then accepted Jesus Christ. Wow. Wow. Out of that dedication, the angels in heaven rejoiced because somebody accepted Christ. If that person had not continued to bug, huh? This would be a lost soul over here. Okay. Psalm 122, 1. I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Hmm. wonder what that means. It means when you go into God's house, you should be celebrating. I don't want you to come through. <laughs> you know? Well, maybe I do. Yeah, you know, then I know you're excited to be here. You may not be excited to, to, to hear me, and that's fine. You should be excited about being in God's house, celebrating with one another. Because when you're excited, you get excited. When she gets excited, you get excited. All of a sudden, we have a bunch of excited people here. Somebody walks in and says, you're either crazy or this is something great. <laughs> wow. Excitement is fantastic. And we have something to be excited about. Acts 12, 5. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. That's one of those gospel things that we're supposed to do. Pray, pray, pray. We know when he was in prison, there was times bars blew open, doors blew open, earthquakes happened, singing happened. There was all singing in prison. Huh? That's what Christians should be doing. Oh, we don't watch him go to prison. But, but you know what? You get the idea. Huh? 1 Corinthians 1, 2. To the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be His holy people. Called to be His holy people. Together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Everyone is the church. James 5.14 Is anyone among you sick that can call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord? Gospel principle. We did that. And we should always do that. Even if it means nothing else gets done during the service. 
that comes first. Because even in that anointing, there's evangelism that takes place. Wow. Here's the article again. I'm going to read it real fast. And it will be done. We, who was in nomination, believe that the Christian church is the entire body of believers in Jesus Christ, who is the founder and only head of the church. The church includes both those believers who have gone to be the Lord and those who remain on the earth, having renounced the world, the flesh, and the devil, and having dedicated themselves to the work which Christ committed unto his church until he comes. The church on earth is to preach the pure word of God, properly administer the sacraments according to Christ's instructions and live in obedience to all that Christ commands. A local church, the body of believers, formally organized on gospel principles, meeting regularly for the purposes of evangelism, nurture, fellowship, and worship. The Wesley Church is a denomination consisting of those members within district conferences and local churches who, as members of the body of Christ, hold the faith set forth in these articles of religion and acknowledge the ecclesiastical authority of its governing bodies. The church is important. It's not as important as, as Jesus. It's not as important as the Holy Spirit. It's not as important as sanctification. It's not as important as the works of the Spirit. But it's up there pretty high. The body of Christ is very, very important. Don't ever think that, oh, I'm not going to show up today. Oh, you know, I just got an ache in my elbow. Maybe I'll just stay home. Wow. You've neglected meeting regularly and you've neglected helping somebody else celebrate. I'm not saying come to church, come to service if you're really, really sick. But what I'm saying is sometimes we need to weigh that and determine who takes priority. Me or God? Why don't you stand this morning? Father God, we do praise you and thank you.